a game without guns, platforming, boss battles, and barely any story, and it's still one of the most beloved Nintendo franchises. In it, you play as a mayor of a little town of animal inhabitants, and that's it. No ending, no specific goal. You do favors, collect fossils and wildlife, build up your home and wardrobe, and while away hours beautifying the landscape. For a game about so little, people of all ages and interests invest a lot of time and care into it. But the most striking aspect of this game is that multitudes of its players, including myself, have described it as emotionally healing. That's why I'm making this video. Using media psychology, I want to help us understand and explain to others how Animal Crossing games can actually contribute to our emotional well-being. After a long day when work, school, or even a bad mood have taken a lot out of us, Animal Crossing players know how good it feels to settle in for an evening of fishing in the river, chatting with villagers, or decorating our house. This soothing, re-energizing feeling we get is what media psychologists call the recovery process. This process is how we replenish important but depleted psychological resources like vitality, patience, and self-esteem. Studies have shown that video games, more than films or no media at all, inspire significant rates of psychological recovery. This is because games like Animal Crossing help us momentarily detach from our real-life stresses, letting us relax both physically and emotionally. Games with pleasant and supportive environments which promote social connections with either real players or NPCs are the most effective at inspiring recovery. Animal Crossing matches that description exactly. The social aspect of the game can't be downplayed. When the creators of Animal Crossing had to pick a genre, they couldn't. Instead, they labeled it as a communication game, which kind of explains why the characters are always pressuring us to write letters. The developers wanted to create new and fun ways for friends and family to communicate by visiting each other's towns or sharing one hometown. Animal Crossing not only helps us recover energy, but it can boost our mood. Mood management theory is a concept I discussed in my previous video about the psychological benefits of horror games. Go check it out for more about games and well-being. Basically, this theory says we play the games we do because they improve our frame of mind. Studies have shown that positive moods majorly contribute to both mental and physical health. But how does Animal Crossing replace neutral or negative moods with a good one? It's actually due to four factors that media psychologists have discovered. The first is excitatory potential. This is how exciting or action-packed the game is. Animal Crossing is a calm, soothing game, which is great for anxiety and stress. Next, absorption potential. How quickly can this game interrupt our current mood and bring us into a new one? Animal Crossing is very easygoing. It isn't very gripping. The height of drama are bits of light gossiping or needing to choose where to place a public works project. The game's engaging, but not overwhelming. Then there's semantic affinity. How closely does the game reflect our real-life situation? Apart from maybe having to manage alone, Animal Crossing is comfortably distant from the stressors of everyday life. Lastly, there's hedonic valence. This is how pleasant and joyful the game is. Animal Crossing scores quite high here. The tone of this game is relentlessly optimistic. Our villagers are usually looking on the bright side of things. Now, these levels aren't suitable for every game and every mood, if you feel you need a high-octane action game to improve your mood, the levels might look like this. Different games give us different benefits. Animal Crossing's unique levels make a perfect recipe for an easygoing, laid-back game that provides satisfying mood repair and mood boost. Then there's the importance of routine. Anyone who has struggled with anxiety or depression will attest that the first thing out the window is our daily routine. Psychologists argue that reinstating routine is one of the first steps to mental health. Part of the gameplay of Animal Crossing is its real-time environment and once-a-day features. In New Leaf, you're encouraged to come back every day to find the fossils, the money rock, or the two furniture trees. Players are motivated to come back tomorrow to try a different hairstyle or see what's new at Nooks. Routines, however small or virtual they are, are important for our well-being and leave us feeling more productive and capable when facing other tasks. Lastly, the hours we spend decorating rooms, fidgeting till we reach item limits, or precisely planting trees help us practice self-presentation. Expressing ourselves is a way we meditate on our identities, which strengthens our self-knowledge and, as studies show, bolster our self-esteem. In conclusion, Animal Crossing offers us a lot. It helps us recover psychological energy, it can boost our mood and help us feel more productive, 
all adding to our sense of well-being. However, it's important to note that detachment or distraction from our real-life stressors doesn't solve them, but having an oasis is important. Time to relax and focus on our moods and identity can make us stronger and more energized to tackle our real stressors. It can't replace professional counseling, but healing games like Animal Crossing can be one tool of many that we can store in our self-care toolboxes. Thank you for watching. I'm going to be adding even more to this channel, so please subscribe if you'd like to hear more about games, movies, and internet content as tools for building our emotional intelligence. Thank you, and until next time, happy playing!